God, we welcome you that are viewing right now live video stream Rock City Church Sunday morning uh, from Baltimore. God bless you. We're glad you've joined us. here to have a great time in the presence of God and to get instructions. See, we're here in the church, Ecclesia, we come every Sunday and we come to get instructions uh, on what is God saying and what is God telling us to do. And that's really what we're about because it's the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen. Worshippers up here making a, a great sound unto him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Everybody good? Yeah. Is God doing something good in your life? Yeah. Yes, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's good. It's good to be in the house. It's good to see what God is doing. It's good to be a part of what God is doing. Yeah. And um and he's doing a lot. I mean, here, sadly, there's a lot of churches that still aren't open. There's a lot of people that are just afraid to go out and are hunkered down in their house like they're in a bunker somewhere. And, um, and we just, you know, we, we, we pray, we pray that God will just ooh, take us out of this season and bring us into a new one. But... We can still worship from home, you know, when we can't make it here. Thankfully, we can be in the house. Thankfully, God's healing people, and they're coming on back in after having had, you know, the disease. And, oh, and one day, we're going to go, remember when? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that day of saying, remember when? Yeah. Remember last year? Sometimes it's hard to, to, you know, just grasp that we have been in this thing since like February. Yes. So, it's time, Father. Yes. It is time. Yes, so, let me, um, uh, all right, we're going to get started. I'm going to welcome the people who are jo joining live stream. Um, I'm supposed to do that when I'm ready to preach. Is it time to do that? Are we good with that? <laughs> you know, I'm kind of new at this because I haven't been in here since we've been doing all this stuff the new way. So, you know, I might flub up here or there and Bishop will have grace for me and the guys back there will have grace for me. Okay, so, but we, we welcome you to our, uh, who are, those of you who are watching live stream services with us this morning and also later on you might be watching on YouTube or on Facebook. There's so many ways that you can watch. And also on our rockcitychurch.com website, you can watch there. And uh, so welcome to our Sunday morning service, and you can also join us on, th on Thursday nights at 715 for the preaching of the word. And Bishop will be back. He will be teaching. He has been teaching some powerful messages on Thursday nights. They're equipping messages. You know, they're, they're to get us on a straight path and get us in focus and and so that we can be successful in this journey of ours. And it's quite a journey, isn't it? It's, it's, there's never a dull moment when you're serving God. There's always something. And I also just want to mention, too, that we have prayer every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 a.m. Again, the numbers are up on the screen. 
you can join us for that. Um, and you can call the number that has a code and you know, come right into our Zoom line. And we have 15 minutes of powerful prayer. And uh, you know, we hear really good reports about how people are enjoying it. And, um, and uh, you know, that we're hearing answers to prayer. We get calls, we get testimonies of people who have been touched in some way. And it's just a great way to start your day every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 in the morning. And then, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at noon uh, on Praise 106.1. You can join, for, uh, join us for 30 minutes of teaching and it's also a time of prayer and teaching, and Bishop is preaching every week, and he, and he has a, a powerful word that he's on there for those 30 minutes. Again, praise 106.1, tune in there, you're driving in your car, you can turn it on, you can listen to it at lunchtime. And also, our prayer line is open 24 hours a day. You can call us right now, you can call the number on the screen, um, and, you know, we have people calling from around, the, we've had them from Australia, we have had them from um, all kinds of places, you know, outside of the U.S. And I think lately we've gotten more of them than we have uh, locally, but, um, but it's great that God is touching lives and that uh, the message can go out to so many countries, so many places, and that people tune in, hear the word. Sometimes we get a testimony back, we get an email or a, a word back, a message back of how people have been touched by God in their lives, and, and which is a wonderful thing. And then we also, at Rock City Church, have a 24-hour prayer line that you can call anytime that you would like to and call for prayer. Somebody is always on that line who can, who can answer and who will be more than happy to pray with you. And, and uh, so, you know, that's a good thing. And here's just a little sidebar that I kind of missed that it's for our people. But... Um, you can, uh, uh, what do they do here, the whys? Daniel, what is, is this, am I supposed to be announcing this? Oh, yeah. So okay. shop, at shop at Wise Markets. I shop at Wise Markets because it's so close to my house and it's a great grocery store. What else? Use your Wise member card to you, register on that flyer. They're out in the okay, that's what you do, yeah. You get the flyer, you register, it's got a little code here, it tells you what to do. And if you can't figure it out, just talk to Daniel, because he's the head of all of this food and all the food coming in. And it's really great. I mean, he has food coming in all the time. And we're working towards, you know, our thanks for Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving turkeys. And, you know, we, we encourage you all. I mean, I don't know how soon you want people to start bringing turkeys, but they'll go in the freezer, right? So we're, gonna, we're looking for how many turkeys? Hundreds of turkeys. So when you're out buying your turkey, you know, look for a deal. Buy one, get two. And then buy two and bring two. <laughs> but, you know, be a part of that. And they should bring them when and where. They can bring them Monday through Friday during church hours. Monday through Friday during church hours. And get them to Daniel at the warehouse. And, uh, and uh, that'll be a good thing. All right. I probably should have done that before we invited people and welcomed people in. But, hey, this is... This is home, this is family, this is what we do. And so now I am gonna to preach to you. God has given me a word um, and I'm excited about preaching to you today and the title of my message is a Recommit on Your Commitment. A recommit on Your Commitment. Do you know what a commitment is? It's a big giant, I do, I will. Commitment is the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or an activity or any number of things. It's just saying, yes, I'll be a part. Yes, I'll be there. Um, and, you know, we had, we had about 50 people say, yes, I'll be there for, for fall cleanup yesterday, but we only had half committed people because only 25 showed up. And we need to just be, and that's not why I'm preaching this. I had this before. But we need, we need to be true to our word. And when we say we're going to do something, we need to do it. And if you know that you aren't going to be able to do it for whatever reason, you should call the person and say, hey, you know, I've got, you know, I'm in, I'm in quarantine all of a sudden. we got a lot of people in quarantine. I'm so tired of quarantine. <laughs> but, you know, so, but we just need to be, you know, diligent and faithful to our commitment. Spiritual commitment reflects a personal depth of faith and is manifested in both attitudes and behaviors. Yeah. 
And, um, and so, you know, how did I get here? You know, how did I get to this message? Well, I was reading John G. Lake, you, you know, his book, Heavenly Authority. Have any of you ever read John G. Lake, Heavenly Authority? Have any of you ever read a John G. Lake book? Okay, okay, a few. Okay, so John G. Lake, he was back in the late, I mean, early 1900s, I guess, maybe born in the late, seven, eight, 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 uh, nine, eight, yeah, 1800s, I guess. I, I don't know, but he was around a long time ago. He's written some great books, and this particular book is called Heavenly Authority. And you know, it's good to go back and read about some of these people who are revivalists, who, who were powerful men and women of God. I love to read these books. So he said, the most magnificent thing the Word of God portrays is that Christ indwelling in you by the Holy Ghost is to make you a son of God like Jesus Christ. God anointed from heaven, God anointed from heaven. God wants to anoint you from heaven with the recognized power of God in your spirit to command the will of God. That's pretty powerful. I want to read that again. The most magnificent thing the word of God portrays is that Christ, who dwells in us, we say yes to him. And as soon as we do, Jesus, come in. I want to give my life to you. I surrender my life to you. I want to live for you. He comes in. He dwells inside of us. He's alive in us. He speaks to us. He gives us understanding. He opens our eyes to sing, see things in the spirit. He is busy continually speaking to us and trying to get our attention and helping by the Holy Ghost to keep us focused and on the right track and the right road. So uh, indwelling in you by the Holy Ghost is to make you a son of God like Jesus Christ. God anointed from heaven. God anointed with the recognized power of God in your spirit to command the will of God. It is time we began to let him have some degree of sway in your heart. Can you say that, Lord? I want you to have some degree of sway in my heart. Let's say it. Lord, I want you to have some degree of sway in my spirit and in my heart and some degree of heavenly dominion, of value, him in control. He wants to be in control. He wants to speak into your life. He wants you to hear him. He wants you to obey him. He wants you to walk in him. And then it says, and some degree of the lightnings of Jesus Christ breaking forth from our spirit. How about that? The lightnings. You know, I, I tried to find out what did lightning mean back, in, back when he was speaking. It means lightning. The lightnings, like a strike of God. In, you know, a strike of God, some degree of that strike of God, of Jesus Christ breaking forth in us to break us open, to make us alive, to make us lit up, to make us contagious. That's what he's after. He needs people to be contagious with the Holy Ghost, with the Spirit of God, not with coronavirus, not with the, 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 the flu that's going around. Not with, he wants us to be contagious. And you know what? Coronavirus is a really contagious disease, and, it, it, it's, and it's not hard to catch. We need to be like that in the Holy Ghost. We need to be so contagious that everywhere we go that people are, 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 are grasped by, you know, your conversation to them, just by your spirit, just by your joy. How can you be so happy when so much crazy is going on? You know, and we need to be this way the day after Election Day, no matter what happens. I mean, we want to be rejoicing and jumping and not weeping and crying, but we know no matter what happens, God is in control. God is in control. He's, we need to do our due diligence and get out there and vote. But he's going to in control and he's going to see us through. Amen. So let him have some degree of sway in your heart. How much are you, are you yielding up to him versus how much are you holding on to? And he wants us to, you know, the old saying, let go and let God. Well, that's a real saying that should be alive in our lives and active in our hearts in this day and age. So... Um, John G. Lake, another uh, quote by him, um, said, Christ proposed to bestow on mankind the very conditions of his own life and being. Think of that. He purposed, not proposed, he purposed to bestow on us the very conditions of his own life and being and to give to man through the gifts of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit because we have the gift of the Spirit, but then we have the gifts of the Spirit. 
And so, and to give man through the gifts of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit the same blessed ministry to the world that he himself had enjoyed and exercised. So Christ, he enjoyed what he did. He was filled with God, overflowing with God. And so that same ministry that he walked in is available for us. Jesus, he wants us to walk in his anointing. He wants us to be contagious. He wants us to exercise that. I mean, how great is that? Yeah. That's just so great. So, so that which Christ enjoyed and exercised, he wants us to have it and to spread it and to share it and to impart it, not just, just hold on to it. We've been given what Jesus himself had and enjoyed it and in walked in, and it is the indwelling spirit of God that's alive in us. And so the gifts of the spirit, we know what they are, but I'm just going to read this portion of scripture to you. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 8 through 10, you can turn there. To one there is given through the spirit a, a, a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing distinguishing between spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues so he he has given this to all of us and so we are all partakers of the gifts of God that's a great thing but a lot of people a lot of Christians people sitting in here are not walking in those gifts are not demonstrating those gifts and they're available to every one of us and so my question to you is just what are we doing with what's been given to us are you laying hands on people are you sharing Christ with people are you telling them about the goodness of God are you telling them are you do you have a word of prophecy in your mouth you know, we all know the, so, the saying, let go and let God. Well, he wants us to really do that. He wants us to let go and let him take over. Um, you know, because sometimes knowing and doing are two different things. God doesn't want us to hold back. He wants us to be in hot pursuit 24-7 and all that he has for us. And he has a lot for us. And you know what? We lose out on a lot when we don't fulfill and follow and do the things he said to us because if, if he speaks to us and gives us something to do and we just sit on it what's the point of him to of him speaking to us again he's waiting for us to get up off our behind and and go forward no holding back no going back no quitting but just in hot pursuit of all that he has for us and, and anything less than the complete surrender of our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ is really robbing our Father, robbing God of the glory he demands and deserves. It's also cheating ourselves out of eternal reward that is, God has reserved for us as we walk in obedience and walk in his purpose and walk in his plan. So we need to be mindful that, about that. And we know about letting go and we know about letting God. We know about it, but knowing and doing are sometimes two different things. We know about trusting and believing, and again, but these are two different things. There's a song, and in a minute, we're going to play it, um, by King and Country. You might have heard it. And this, this song kind of got me going on this message a while back. And, and some of you, like I said, you've probably heard it. Um, um, it's about burning the ships, burn the ships. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard it, and I just, oh, I like this song. This is a great song. And then, then it got to about burn the ships. I was like, what the heck are they burning the ships for? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I did not know. I'm like, why did they sing this great song and then burn the ships? Burn the ships. Why are they burning ships? I said, okay, king and country, I think they're English. I think they're British. I think. I don't even know for sure. Um, and I, I was like, maybe it has something to do. And actually, there's a real history lesson in this. Have you ever checked it out? Have you ever looked it up? Because I was just like, what did, you know, did I miss something along the way in history about this? And um, so let, let's play that, and then I'll go back to a little um, uh, how I got here and all. You got it? It's a video. Powerful video, isn't it? Because when you hear the song, you might just go, oh, what are they talking about? Why? And, and really, that's what I did. You know, it was kind of like, what's the deal? Um, but, but uh, and, and I thought, you know, when I started to read about it, I was like, okay, I must have missed this history lesson. Um, and, um, and I read about it recently, and I, I, I dug into it, and I found out that there was a historic story behind it. 
And I understood the principle, you know, burn the ships, you know, leave things behind. But I really didn't realize there was this period in history. Um, in the 1500s, Hernan Cortez conquered much of the South American continent hundreds of years ago. He sailed from Mexico with 11 ships, 13 horses, 110 sailors, 553 soldiers. The indigenous population was 5 million. Two previous expeditions had failed to establish a settlement. But what Cortez is reported to have done after landing is an epic tale. He issued an order that turned his mission into an all or nothing proposition. Burn the ships. Because if they got out of the ship and they got on land and the ships were burned, there was no going back. They were given their lives to be dedicated to this country that they had gone to. As the crew watched their fleet of ships burn and sink, they came to terms with the fact that retreat was not an option. No turning back, like the old song says, no turning back. That's an oldie. I like this one better. It's, <laughs> I like it, burn the ships. And you know, we need to do that in our lives and burn those things and, and remove those things and refuse to go back. Um, you know, uh, um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna read, I'm just gonna read the, the words to you again because it's just so powerful, not all of them. But it says, you know, after it says, you know, all cast away and lonely on the shore, da 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 da. Step into a new day. We can rise up from the dust and walk away. We can dance upon our heartache. Have any of you ever had any heartache, hurts, disappointments? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes things that are hard and difficult and, you know, our disappointments in life, the pain of life, what life brings, you know, during this COVID season. Some, you know, a lot of people have lost loved ones. Um, you know, people have lost jobs. They've been out of, they've been home, maybe not getting the finances that what they've had in, in the past. And so it's just hard, you know, and there's some heartache, but we got to be able to dance on that heartache, light a match, leave the past, burn the ships, and don't look back. I mean, God, we always have to be looking ahead because God's got something for us, and we need to never let that out of our heart and out of our mind and out of our, 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 our spirit of knowing that we know that. God is for us. He is always for us. Don't let it arrest you. This fear is fear of falling again, and if you need a refuge, I'll be right here to the end. That's what he says to us. He'll be right there to the end. And... Um, and so, you know, I, when, I, when I read about it, like I said, you know, I was like, what, what the heck are they burning ships for? And when I read it and studied it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's really about sacrifice. It's really about being really in, you know, it, really in. And I've seen, I've seen movies over the years about missionaries who went on incredible journeys where there was no turning back. And one of, my, one of them came to my mind called End of the Spear. Did any of you ever see End of the Spear? It's been years since it was out. But it was based on actual events from 1956 in which five men, five male missionaries, were speared by a group of the Wadoni tribe, and they were all killed. They went there, you know, giving their lives, thought they would be there, transform a whole, you know, a whole, a whole uh, group of people. And I, I'm, I'm really not sure. I saw the movie. I don't remember how long they were there before they were killed. I don't remember if they were killed suddenly, but it seems like it was a bit of time. But regardless, what happened eventually um, is, is that one of the, the, uh, the son of one of the missionaries that was killed um, later went back there after all that his father and these other men had been killed. And, and he went back there to, to one of the tribesmen who had taken part in the attack. And those two, the, the son and that man who had been a part of it, um, formed a lifelong bond that continue, continued into his, into his death. This, this, uh, his name was Minkaya or Mankaya or something like that, the, the person who lived there um, that they went to, you know, um, to share with, and though they gave their lives years later. So sometimes we're busy and we're doing, and maybe we get disappointed because something that we felt like God told us to do, we did, and then we aren't seeing the fruit of it. And, you know, we can let discouragement come in. We can get dis let disappointment come in. We can say, well, that's the last time I'm going to do that, or I'm not going to go up there and, you know, or whatever. We can just, we can turn it into an excuse for sitting on our butt and never doing anything again. You know, when we've got to just kick ourselves in the butt and get up and go again, because there's opportunities. There's always other opportunities. And yes, there's going to be letdowns, and yes, there's going to be failures, but God so how, the song says, it says, how did we get here? All cast away and lonely on a shore. 
I can see in your eyes, dear, it's hard to take, take for a moment more. We've got to burn the ships, cut the ties, send a flare in the night, say a prayer, turn the tide, dry your tears, and wave goodbye. And step into a new day. So if you've had some disappointments and some difficulties, step into a new day. Rise up from the dust and walk away. Dust off your hands. Shake off your feet and say, okay, this isn't going to hold me back. I'm going forward. I'm not giving up. I, you know, I can dance on the heartache. I can get past this. Light a ship. Burn the past. Burn up those ships and don't look back. And, uh, and keep on going. And that's really what God is saying to us today, you know, is that that's what commitment is. Sometimes you can be committed and in something, doing something, you know, and serving God, or, or maybe something at a job or a family situation, all kinds of things. And, and you, can, you can get let down or you can get disappointed. Maybe it didn't turn out the way you thought it would. Maybe God you know, you thought God had given you this vision for a, a business or a vision to go to leave your job and go to somewhere else. And, you know, then COVID started and you got laid off and the other job you were in is still, you know, up and running and going. And you could be disappointed and why and how come and, 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 and want to give up on God. But we have to be, we have to be so determined that nothing will cause us to get off this straight and narrow path. Because, you know, when you're walking and you're just going along, if somebody came up and pushed you, you can get off the path. And so sometimes the things of life comes off and pushes you or pushes you back, pushes you back some more, pushes you back some more. And you just go, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not making any headway. Why am I doing this? I might as well give up. And you know what might be on the edge? Might be, what might be on the tomorrow is that breakthrough, is that victory. But if you have a vision, if you have a call, if you have a word from God, you've got to stay committed to it. You know, my husband and I, we got a word from God in 1976 from Pastor Charles Green and Pastor David Schock. And it was a prophetic word, uh, and you've heard him tell this, but you know, 19, 19, 1976, it was the first time we ever had presbytery in the church in Virginia Beach, Rock Church of Virginia Beach, where we came out of. And, um, and, and it said that you know, we would be going out and all these great things and wonderful things, you know, and you do this and you do that. And we, um, you know, we saw other people get prophesied over and get sent out. Somebody else get prophesied over and get sent out. And it was like, we would be like, well, I mean, we weren't anxious. I mean, we loved what we were doing. We loved the church. But we waited from 1976 till 1983, you know, before we came here. So a good seven years or so. And, um, but we also saw people get antsy. And they wanted. And they pushed. And they, you know, went after things and it, before, before their time. And we've seen, you know, where a lot of times it didn't work out. It wasn't the timing of God. We have to be willing to wait on the time, timing of God and remain committed to his purpose and his plan for us. Because we have to be, we just have to trust that he knows best. He knows what's what. And he's going to see us through. And so, um, um, but we can always, we, you know, we can always step into a new day, just like the song says, step into a new day. If you've had a disappointment, if you had an issue, you can step into a new day because God always has new days for us. And that's how you go after goals. That's how you choose to forgive. That's how you trust. That's how you do these things. That's how you reconcile. Sometimes we need to reconcile relationships and maybe it just hasn't worked, but just try it again. Go after it again. You know, leave the past and the burning ships and step into a new day because God has plans for us. He, he doesn't want us turning back. And so that story is just so powerful of Cortez in, in South America and um, what he did. And, uh, and, um, and Batterson says, uh, um, I, I pulled the story. I was reading actually a book by Mark Batterson called All In. And um, I, think, I think Rob got me hooked on, on um, um, Mark Batterson way back. He's written some really good books. So this one is called All In. He has this st story in here. But he says, you burn the ships named past failure and past success. You burn the ship named bad habit. You burn the ship named regret. You burn the ship named guilt or fear. You burn the ship named my old way of life or distrust. I added a few in here. You burn the ship called failure. 
And yesterday, it's funny, all these ships, I was walking on my dock, our dock, we have a, we have a, a dock out behind us where a, a lot of boats are, and I was reading the names of some of the boats, and I didn't see any boats with those kind of names. I didn't see a past failure name boat. I didn't see a past success. I didn't see bad habit. I saw high spirits, manna. There was a manna one. I was like, hmm, I wonder who owns that one. They got to know something about God. Seize the day, S-E-A-S. You know, um, and, and, and unsinkable. <laughs> that's, that's a good name for a boat, but I don't even know if I want to be thinking about sinking with a boat. But, you know, what names are on the ship of your past? Do you have some names on something maybe that you, your past that you, you know, that, that you aren't so happy with? You can rise up today and erase those and, and get on and start pushing forward instead of looking at the past. It could be liar. It could be traitor. It could be unfaithful. Or it could be good. It could be honorable. It could be loving. It could be faithful. It could be trustworthy. What names are on the ship of your past? Only you can, can look and go, Hmm, speak it to me, Holy Spirit. Speak it to me, Holy Spirit. You know, those of you who've been around, you know the Argentine. I quote him all the time, who stood up here and said, speak it to me, Holy Spirit. You know, because that's what we need to do. You know, if, if we have a ship, a boat, a past something in our life um, that caused us to stumble or caused us issue or took pre preeminence, you know, over you know, what it should have, that's, that's the kind of thing you need to burn up and leave behind. Um, things that are pulling you away from God, you know, causing you to be weaker, causing you to be half in instead of all in. You know, why don't we get in this thing and go 100% after him and don't look back at all the stuff except to say, I once was there, but now I'm here, and I have a whole future in front of me of what God can do. Leave the past behind you. Leave the failures behind you. Get up to a new day and go forward. You know, so, um, um, and, and you know what? That's what Elijah did. That's what Elijah did in 1 Kings chapter 19, 21. Um, you can turn there if you want, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of a, a story about it. He, he made a decision to follow Elijah. So I'm talking about Elisha in, in 1 Kings 19.21, and he made a decision to follow Elijah, and he left everything. You know, he just got acquainted with this guy. And he says, you know, Elijah says to him, you know, follow me, come after me. And so he, he had been a farmer, I guess, because he had plow equipment. And um, he turned his plow equipment and he turned it into, he burned it up and he sacrificed his oxen. He, he boiled their flesh and that was his last supper. He said goodbye to his old life and he had a barbecue with his old friends and he went with Elijah to answer the call of God. He just left it all behind and he didn't just leave it, you know, well, if this doesn't work out, I'll go back to my house. Oh, well, if this doesn't work out, my friends are taking care of my oxen. I can come back to my business. No, he slaughtered them. He might have had a good meal along with Elijah. He, he, he burned up everything and he said, I'm all in. I'm committed. I'm going with you, Elijah. I, this is going to be my life. And we know the story of Elisha, how powerful it was. We need to not look back. We have a new day in front of us, no matter what's going on right now, no matter whether you're out of a job, finances are tight, things are difficult. You know, you might have a loved one who's got COVID. Maybe, you know, we've had people who've lost loved ones to it, parents. And, and those, those are, it's difficult times. But God... It's a time for God to move. It's a, God for to a time for God to work in us. It's a, God, a time for God to you know, show us and talk to us about the things that are really important, that are life-changing, and give us a word so we can be encouragers because there are so many people who just have no clue of what's happening and they're fearful and they just aren't sure what's before them and they're you know, people that are depressed, people that are down and out, people that are just wallowing in that. And... Um, but we have to realize that every day is a new day that's ahead of us. And after all these months and weeks, you know, we do need a new day. We're antsy for a new day. But you know what? Tomorrow's a new day, no matter what it's going to be. It's a new day. God has an assignment for each one of us, and it's a grand plan that he has. Say, say out loud, God has an assignment for me, and it's a grand plan. God has an assignment for me, and it's a grand plan. It's his plan. And he is not going to renege on it. He is not going to let down on it. He is going to see you through. But what are we going to do? 
be diligent. Well, well, all this, well, well, I thought this. Well, but God, but God, but God. He has a grand plan. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to press on and not look back. And he's going he's gonna to lead us. He'll be with us every step of the way. You know, there's, a, there's an old song that says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. You know, I, I, I do like this other song better. But, you know, but there needs, we need to remind ourselves of that. You know, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. How many people do you know that have come to Christ, friends, family, um, you know, siblings, co-workers that you shared Christ with, you, you know, maybe they came to church, they came to the altar, came for a little while, and then they fizzled, and they're just back out there. Do you know people like that? Raise your hand. How many of you know people like that? Three people know people? Like, man, I must know a lot, of, a lot of sorry people. How many of you know people who's come to Christ? Okay, okay, you're awake. Maybe you weren't awake. I just got to make sure you're awake. Don't fall asleep on me now. You got those masks on. I think you got some of them pulled up over your eyeballs. Can't really see. You know, they're making you sleepy. You're breathing your own breath all this time. You're getting woozy. Shake yourself. Come on, shake yourself. Shake yourself. Come on. I won't be too long. Come on. God's got something to say to us. God's got something to say to us. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Say it. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Because how many friends, how many people do we know? Where is our commitment in 2020? And where is it going to be in 2021? Where are we going to be? You know, when we, get, when we get married and we walk down the aisle and we look in each other's eyes, we say, I do, when the, when the preacher says, do you, you know, you know, promise to love and cherish and nourish and care for this one, this bride, this bridegroom. And we say, I do. And we don't just say it, you know, yeah, I do, I promise. But we have to say, till death do us part. You know, that's a strong commitment. You know, we forsake mother and father to cleave unto our new spouse, and there's no turning back. Um, um, you know, when, when my husband and I got married, his mom and dad were, had passed away when he was young, and my parents moved to Italy for three years, two weeks after I got married. So, you know, I've told you this before, but there was no turning back to nobody or nothing. It was me and him, you know. My sisters and brothers, you know, they'd all moved in different places, and, you know, so it was, it was me and him and no turning back or going home. And when we come to Christ and we say yes, there needs to be nothing else left in our life as, other than I've accepted you as my Lord and Savior, and there's no turning back ever, never, just like the old song says. You know, you know when people join the military, you get people in the military that get more committed to, than they are to Christ, than the people who are to Christ, because you get in the military, you can't just get out. Once you sign those papers and you pledge your allegiance and whatever else you do, you know, you're in there. You know, and if you leave, you're AWOL. And you're going to land up in the brig or somewhere, you know? So, you know, people make commitments for that. And sometimes they're maybe sorry that they did. But they're in there until their time is up. It's kind of like you do wrong, you end up in jail. You're in there until your time is up. And uh, no turning back. You can be sorry. But in our life in Christ, we need to have a no turning back, you know, when we sign up. When Columbus set sail for America... And, and, well, he didn't know it was America. He just was setting sail for the new world. It was an all-out commitment. Yeah. You know, they didn't know what they would face. They didn't know who would be in the new world. They didn't know anything. They didn't know what was before them. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have the privilege of going back home to mama or to country. They were in it for the long haul. And my question to you is, are you in it for the long haul, this serving God? You know, because today people just don't remain true. They don't re remain true to their commitments in their relationships, in their marriages. I mean, divorces, even in the Christian, in the church, are as, just about as high as they are in the world. And that's a sad thing. When you say, yes, I do, and then you break that commitment, you break it off Amen. instead of working through it. And I mean, I know sometimes there's things that are things, but sometimes it's just stuff. 
And stuff is kind of different than things. I mean, sometimes there's immorality or there's, you know, breaking covenant and that kind of thing. But sometimes just, well, we don't get along. Well, we fight. Well, get some counseling. Well, come to church. Well, read some books. We'll get some help. We'll meet with a couple whose marriage is doing great. We'll do something about it. Don't just give up on it. Don't just say, well, after all, you made a covenant before God to be married to this person for the rest of your life. I've been married, I want to say 35 years because you'll think I'm so young. But you know me, and I've been married 50 years. Now, granted, I got married when I was 13, but, but um, you know, and my husband's so much older than me. Well, <laughs> but, you know, but it's good, and we weren't saved. I mean, we got saved a few years after, but never, ever in my in 50 years of being married have I ever wanted anything or anyone but this man that I'm married to. Now, I can annoy him, and he can annoy me, because annoyances happen in marriages. Does that ever happen to you, Darlene? James, does she ever annoy you? Daniel. Okay, no, Stephanie. I know Stephanie can annoy you, but, but, but Stephanie, does Daniel ever annoy you? He does? Easy going, laid back, da David. David, do you have, a, do you annoy your wife ever? Oh, that's not David? Oh, okay, what's your name? Oh, I thought you were David. I mean, it, things are a little blurry out there to me. Uh, Joe, do you ever annoy your wife? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, does she ever annoy you? Mel and Mary Jane. I mean, your husband's not here to defend himself. Huh? He's watching. Are you committed to that man for the long haul? Does he ever annoy you? <laughs> Do you ever annoy him? Is that when you bake the cookies? <laughs> to get past it? No, Mary Jane? Yeah? Oh, she's like, what do you think? You know, not a long time. <laughs> what do you think? You know, but God because that's what covenant is all about, and so it is in the church. And so why do we walk out, you know, when something doesn't go our way? Well, we were supposed to do this, and they didn't use me. I was supposed to have an opportunity to share this and something, and, and, they, and, and then we just whimper and whine like little three-year-olds instead of, I'm committed to this thing. I'm a part of something greater, bigger than little old me. God has a plan and a purpose, not for just me individually, but for those people that are sitting on the front row with me and the people that are behind me and the people that are in covenant with the church. God has a plan. God has something he wants to do with us. He isn't finished yet. There's a lot of people at home. I say it to you. Come on back to church. You can spread out. You can get your own pew back in the corner. We won't breathe on you. Wear your mask. Bring goggles if you want to. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's two sections back here, and there's two sections back here. You can be like 20 feet apart from each other. Why don't you want to be in church? I couldn't stand not to be in church. Church is a good thing. Come back to church for Petey's sake, for Jesus' sake, for our sake. We want to see you even forgetting your names. We forget what you look like. <laughs> We're forgetting who is and who isn't. You're going to be on who isn't soon. You're going to be on that list. Once they were here, now they ain't. You know, at least let us know you're alive or something. <laughs> Father, this is family. I mean, don't we take time, I hope you do, to reach out to your natural brothers and sisters? You know, my brothers and sisters are scattered all over. But we... Um, every once in a while, we get a, great, a group text, just crazy out of the nowhere, out of nowhere, especially for my crazy brother, the oldest one of all. And uh, he'll just send some crazy thing. We'll all answer. We'll all go, oh, how's it going, blah, blah, blah. Then we don't hear each other from each other for another month, and somebody else will start one up or finally answer the one that came, you know, 30 <laughs> days ago, and then we'll get going again. Oh, where have you been, out of the country? You know, but... We're family. What a great thing. God's doing good things. And, we, and you all who are out there, those who you are in the area, yeah, we want to see you back. We hope you're well. We pray you're well. But once you're well, come on home. Hey, listen, I had COVID. It came up on me as a big surprise. I thought I had a cold. Went and got tested. Darlene calls me back and says, girl, you got it. I was like, okay, well, it's over now. I mean, you know, I, I'm thankful. I'm so thankful. 
uh, that I, I had a scratchy throat. I, had, I felt like I was getting a cold. That's all I thought it was. Four day and it was four days and it was done. I, for anybody else who gets it, I pray that's your that's how it goes for you. And I've heard that a lot. It's not deadly to everybody. It's not you know. Now Mark's been through a tough time, but he's home now and he's doing well. And Mark, we're so glad you're back. But he's well. He's healthy. He's good. Went through a little period of time. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for hospitals. But life is going forward. It's a good thing. Amen. And uh, as, uh, right now, as, well, as much as we know is, you can't get it again. At least we know that for, what, six months or something. So uh, hopefully it stays the case. Amen? Yeah. But God has an assignment for each of us, for each one of us. So our commitment, you know, when we get married, when we come to Christ and we say yes, it's no turning back. It's a commitment when we join the military. When, you know, and I, again, I said when Columbus, when he, he, he came over, it was no going back. And so we have so much history of people who gave their all. People quit jobs because their feelings get hurt. You know, people say they're, they'll be there to serve and then they don't show up. You're calling tops credentials every time. And we don't have to have credentials. Well, I'm not so good at this. Well, I can't do this. You know, but God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Amen. And, and that's what he's after. He, you might say, well, what can I do? What do I have? You just don't even know until you step in. I mean, when we came here, I never imagined I'd ever preach. You know, and I'm not the big preacher, uh, you know, of all time and the one, you know, but I'll step in and preach. And of course, I've taught with, you know, the women many, many times. But I can remember early on, uh, in the gym, my husband was out of town the first time I preached. And I was, I remember being petrified. I don't remember what I preached, but I do remember that we had, had some kind of musicians there because we had a stage and it was sideways or something. I think we put it long-ended or something. That's what I see in my mind. But, but um, that, I, I remember that I preached and I was like scared to death. And they're like, you know what? You step into something new and God will see you through. And uh, there's always going to be something new. And we can hold ourselves back or we can push ourselves forward. If you're willing to go where, where God gives you a green light, he'll take you to inaccessible places to do impossible things. Things you never expected. I mean, we never, we didn't know what God would do with us here, but he's done powerful things, mighty things. And I'm so thankful. Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. And I, you know, to you all who are watching, this is for you. God wants to use you. God wants you to step out and be available to him and, and say a big yes to him because he has a plan and a purpose for your life, just like he has it for those of us who are sitting here in church today. Ephesians 4, 17 through 24, this says, This I say therefore and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind. We gotta not walk in the futility of our minds, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they have become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But, it says, you did not learn Christ in this way. You didn't learn Christ that way. If indeed you've heard him, uh, and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you say, lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We know this scripture. And put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God and has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. And that's what we put on. We put on righteousness. We put on holiness. We put on the new self when we come to him, the likeness of God. We have his, his spirit in us, leading us, and we need to have our ear open, our eyes open, our hearts always sensitive. We need to be mindful of what we're looking at and what we're listening to. And, uh, and here, this is the way the message says this, uh, Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. And so I insist, and God backs me up on this, that there is no going along with the crowd, the empty-headed, mindless crowd. Do you know that's what's out there? There's an empty-headed, mindless crowd out there, and a lot of people are just bumbling along. Oh, I'll go do this. This is what somebody told me to do. 
instead of getting fixed and focused and being successful and being in God. They've refused for so long to deal with God that they've lost touch not only with God, but with the reality itself. They can't think straight anymore, feeling no pain. They let themselves go in sexual obsession, addicted to every sort of perversion. That's the Message Bible on Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. But that's no life for us. You learn Christ, it goes on to say. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, been well instructed in the truth, precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. We don't have the excuse of ignorance. We don't have the excuse of everything, and I mean everything connected with the old way of life. We, if you want to be successful in God, you've got to get right way, rid of the old way of life, the sin part of the old way of life. That means you have to get rid of every person you ever knew. And that doesn't mean you have to get, you know, change your job unless it's a job that's not a godly job. But, but the old way of life that will pull us down, we're not going to be successful in the things of God if we don't cut the ties, if we don't burn the ships, if we don't say, I'm all in. I'm not going to be caught up with this crowd. I'm not going to go back to this stuff because people will continually try and drag you back into it. Oh, come in. Come on. It's not so bad. Oh, you don't need to do that anymore. Oh, come on. You know we're having such a great time. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And then take on an, an entirely new way of life. A God-fashioned life. A life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. There are no limits to what God can do in and through you. Trust is so important. Trust is really important. The definition of trust is firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability or strength of someone or something. True, trust, firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Relations have to be built on trust, confidence, and belief. Here's what, here's, you know, trust. I wrote a few things down. When coronavirus is looming, when you have a miscarriage, I mean, you have to trust when coronavirus is looming. You have to trust God when you have a miscarriage. You have to trust God when your child gets cancer. You have to trust God if you get laid off. You have to trust God when the last paycheck came and you still need a job. You have to trust God when you lose a loved one. Trust, we need to keep on trusting God no matter what's going on around us because he will never let us down. He's the one that will see us through the hard times. When you get saved, you burn the ships of your old way of living. You give up stuff, you stop sinning, you start believing, you start trusting. Forgiveness is about burning the ships. When we forgive someone, we need to burn the hurt. We, you know, you can't say, oh, well, no, no. You know, but you gotta burn the ship of unforgiveness. We need to burn the hurt, burn the disappointment, bury it, end it once and for all. Pick up yourself and say, that is not going to be the end of my life. That relationship, that, you know, job that I lost, that whatever, you know, God's got something, he's always got something better for you. He always has something for you. He always has a plan and a purpose for you. If we will just go to him, we will talk to him, we will ask him, he will show us. Get counsel if you need counsel. Talk to somebody who you know is plugged in and who loves God and is serving him and is not wavering. But we need to be true to ourselves. Keep the commitments you make to yourself and you make to others. You know, there's so many people in the Bible who left their past, um, and they left their family, and they went after God's will and purpose, and they didn't look back. You know, the disciples, just the disciples themselves, you know, the, the 11 of them, uh, they all left their way of life to follow Christ. And, um, and they, these men were from just ordinary lives. They had lived ordinary um, men with a variety of backgrounds. They were from all different kinds of things, fishermen, carpenters, you know, uh, uh, tax collectors, and all of that. But they heard the truth, and they said yes, and they picked up their, they picked up their life, and they said, I'm going after you. And they never looked back. They Amen. never looked back. Um, and so, you know, all but one of them died as a martyr for their faith, you know? Do you, ever, do you ever see some of these movies like The Tip of the Spear and things like that where people gave their lives and you go, hmm, hmm, wonder how I would do. You know, I mean, sometimes you just ponder, God, how would I do? I mean, I'd like to think that I'd just go, go ahead, kill me. I'm not going to deny. I, I mean, I would not deny, but it would be hard. You know, well, if you just say or do such and such, we'll let you. No, 
We're not going to just give in. We're not going to give up. We're going to be diligent. Everyone, all but one of them, died a martyr for their faith. That's commitment. How about the woman who was caught in adultery in John 8? You know, it's 8, 1, verses 1 through 11, which we're not going to read, but you know the story. You know, Jesus went to the temple to teach, you know, the scribes and the Pharisees, and, and a, they brought a woman who was caught in adultery to him. And really what they were doing is they were testing him. They wanted to see what he would do. They were, going to, they were trying to catch him and to accuse him. And he said, let him who is without sin cast the first stones. And how many stones were thrown? None. None. So she left there and she followed Jesus and sinned no more. How great is that? Nicodemus. These are just basic stories and you know them. You know, in John 3, 1 through 21, again, you can go home and read it, but he came to Jesus by night. He was powerful Pharisee. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. He was a part of the Jewish ruling council. He was a wealthy man, a powerful man. And he wasn't supposed to mix with people like Jesus and the common people and his disciples, a fisherman, you know, and people like that. He wasn't supposed to mix with people like that. But he had to know if the Galilean was for real. Something, he had heard something. He had probably seen something. He'd probably seen that woman who was caught in adultery and her life changed and she was no longer in the red light district, but she was in the house of God. She was following Jesus and he saw, you know, who knows? We don't know the story, but something prompted him, something prodded him and, uh, and he had to know if the Galilean was for real. So Jesus talked to him about being born again. He was a highly regarded representative of the educated class. So following Christ was gonna mark him Hey, do you remember Chuck Colson back in the day? You know, he was a man in politics and was out there. He was the hatchet man for Nixon. You know, and he ended up getting saved and writing a great book. Um, um, well, I can't even remember the name of that book, but I read it and I have it at home. And he became an evangelical preacher and a writer and just um, gave it up. Saul of Tarsus, you know, converted and became Paul the Apostle. We know these stories. Joseph in the Old Testament. You know, look at the prophetic dreams that Joseph had and his eagerness to explain them to his older brothers, you know. And, uh, um, and, and what happened was they ended up hating him because they didn't like him having all these dreams and him thinking he was something. God's talking to me. And, and so when he got, you know, when he had them around, he'd share it with them. And then he became hated by all of them. And there was jealousy and there was hatred. Um, and, and we know the story that Joseph's, Brothers devised a wicked plan against him uh, to have him killed. And, um, you know, but eventually Joseph ended up restoring his brothers and providing for them. Then years later, uh, you know, when famine came and they came and he, he was, his life had totally changed from where he was in prison to being a, a ruling leader. And here his family came and his brothers and he provided food for them. And so, um, um, that, you know, that's commitment. He, his, no matter what his brothers had done, he was committed to them and he wanted to see that they would make it. And so, and Joseph had some great qualities. He had 10 brothers and he was the youngest and the favorite. And his brothers mocked him and because of his dreams, and they sold him into slavery and they told their father he was dead. You know, we know the story. But he had patience. In our world, patience is sorely lacking. You know, he had patience. He had to wait a long time for reconciliation. You know, we got fast food on every corner, we got Google you know, for all of our questions to get answered. You know, if we get offended, you know, we, you know, if we get, I mean, we get offended if somebody doesn't text us back in five minutes, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, you didn't answer me. Well, you wrote me at 11.15 at night. I happened to be asleep. Sorry, I could have written you at, I mean, text you back at 6 a.m. and woke you up. You know, but people get offended so, at, over so many things. And, uh, but Jesus waited for his time to come and he stayed true to God. Nothing yeah. caused him to waver. And we need to ask ourselves, hmm, speak it to me, Holy Spirit. Can I say that about you, about me? Faithfulness. He stayed faithful no matter what. When Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him, he stayed faithful. Joseph never blamed God. He wanted to please God no matter what. Can you say that? Hmm. Hmm. Forgiveness. Joseph didn't hold a grudge against his brothers. You know, and when they came to a time of famine, he blessed them and provided them. His example shows us that even when others commit evil against us, God can always use it for good. So just in closing, my thoughts, you know, to, on this day, you know, the, that there's been all these martyrs, there's been all these things, you know, um, and, uh, and who died for their faith and didn't turn back. But where are you? Where are we? 
How about people out there you know that are just on the edges, you know, that you could go after? How many, you know, do we know that have been in hot pursuit of God and committed and the next thing, you know, we know they're gone? You know, we need to be diligent to go after one, but also if you know who they are or you know somebody that maybe we don't know, go after them. Reel them back in. Speak life to them. Let them know God is merciful and loving and kind. You know, because things happen. People get offended. People, you know, get false expectations. People get disappointed. Shoot, I've been offended. I've been disappointed on a time or two over the last however many years I've been saved. You know, uh, you know I've been disappointed, and, and I've heard some excuses and probably made some excuses. But none of it, I mean, I've heard a lot of excuses, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna deter me. It's not gonna get me off course. If we don't, if, if we don't, you know, take charge of those kind of things, will destroy us. It'll get us off course. You know, they'll lead us off course. They'll fill our minds with false accusations and keep us rehashing old hurts. They'll re, they will shipwreck our purpose. God wants us, that's what commitment is. Not letting yourself get off course. Not letting your, get, get, at, you know, out of sync with, with the body of Christ and your brothers and sisters. You know, and it does happen. It happens in marriages. It happens in friendships. It happens among co-workers. It happens with siblings. But God, but God, don't take your heart, don't take to heart all the things that people say. This is Ecclesiastes 7, 21, 22. Lest you hear your servant cursing. You, your heart knows that many times you yourself have cursed others. Hmm. <laughs> That's in the Bible. I, when I read that, I was like, does it really say that? that? You yourself have cursed others? Well, I don't know if I use swear words, but I could have fussed about them and probably under my breath cursed them without a swear word. Because, you know, cursing has a lot of words. And it's just to put down. Luke 17, 3-4. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. That's pretty straightforward. If he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, forgive him. Amen. That's what we're called to do. Amen. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness, oh, thank, you. thank God, and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. This is going to be our prayer, forgetting those things that lie behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call. Amen, amen. Um, we're going to pray. Um, I didn't bring my announcement sheet up here with me. And <laughs> if you're watching the program, I forgot to bring and say all the things I was supposed to say. So Tyler, hopefully somehow you put it up there so they knew how to tune in and know how to come back and know how to watch. And Lord... Help my husband be forgiving. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I was supposed to say. I have it on paper somewhere. Oh, well, maybe I have it right here uh, about how to all the ways to watch. But tell them how to watch. I hope you didn't miss it. YouTube, Rock City Church. Father, stand up. Lord, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you, Father, that you are so committed to us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. You are here for us every moment of every day, every second of every day. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your forgiveness, God. And we today say, I commit, I recommit, I make a new commitment, a fresh commitment, that I will live for you all the days of my life, that I will not let offenses get in the way, that I will not let hurts and words offend me and turn me away, but I will stand fast, I will stand fast, I will stand fast. Lift your hand if that's your prayer. Father, I pray for your people today. You see these hands. We want to remain steadfast. We want to remain committed. God, in the work we're called to do, in the service we're called to, in our places of work, in the house of God, Lord, in serving and helping and cleaning, all these things, God, in our families, in our homes, to our mates, God, commitment, Lord, to you, commitment, commitment. Father, let's just say it together. I commit to you, God. I commit to you, God, afresh and anew, afresh and anew, to serve you all the days of my life, to serve you all the days of my life with love and honor 
and commitment. Bless your people today, Father, in Jesus' name. And if you're here today and you have never accepted Christ to be your Savior, you've never, you've never, uh, you've never given your heart to Jesus, you've never done these things, I just um, pray that you would uh, today lift, raise your hand if you're here and you want to say yes to God, yes to Jesus, yes to him, and you want to accept Jesus into your life as your personal savior because you've never done it before. Or maybe you're just away from him. You're far away from him. I just uh, want you to lift up your hand in the church, and if you're here, we'll pray for you. Anybody here wants to uh, rededicate their life or get saved? It looks like every... Is there a hand? Okay. Oh, yeah, here's a hand. All right, somebody's going to walk with you or stand with you and pray with you. And, um, and we just welcome you into the family of God this morning. God wants to bless you. This is Cindy. Cindy's going to share with you. And Darlene is going to share with you. And, um, and, uh, and you're going to be mightily blessed. We welcome you to the family of God. Saints of God, um, we're going to put the, uh, uh, the offering um, uh, plates out. So if you didn't bring an offering today or, you know, just to help us out because the offering is a little low, we're pretty skimpy in here today. We need, we need to um, do all we can do uh, to uh, bless the house of God. Amen? Because we have things to do. We have people to feed for Thanksgiving. Give to Can Can. Buy your turkeys. We have people, we have our internationals that we, we, we provide for and we help overseas and, and so many needs in the house. So please um, be faithful to get, bring your offering or give a little extra if you haven't already done that today. And I just bless you, bless you, bless you. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Amen. What to pray, I'll pray. What to pray, I'll pray. Where you go, I'll go. What to say, I'll say. What to pray, I'll pray. What to pray, I'll pray. If Jesus only you do he would only say
family, thanks for joining our live stream. It's now easier than ever to give online. Visit rockcitychurch.com. Select Give from the menu. Select what kind of gift you would like to give and type the amount. Choose how you will be given. Choose the frequency and select Next. Fill out your giving information. You can save your information by creating a profile. Just follow the instructions at the bottom of the page. Once you're done, select Next and you will receive your giving confirmation. You can also text to give. Here's how. Text to 1-844-639-7801. Type the dollar amount followed by one of these options. Send the message and you'll receive a secure link to online giving. Fill out your payment information and tap process at the bottom to process your gift and a confirmation text will be sent to your phone. After giving for the first time, One Step Giving is now available on your phone through one convenient step. Just type the dollar amount followed by one of these options. We appreciate every gift and we thank you for supporting Rock City Church. Remember, our prayer room and our prayer line are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For prayer, call us at 410-882-2689. Thank you for watching with us here at Rock City Church. If you prayed with us, we want to hear from you. Call our prayer line at 410-882-2689. You can also join us in giving. Simply go to giver.cc right now. Rock City Church is still active. We're feeding 40,000 families a month. Find out about these ministries and more at rockcitychurch.com or call the church office at 410-882-2217. God bless you.